Hey everybody, this is Frame by Frame, and uh, this is a little bit of a plug before the show starts. So, here you go. Are you ready? You can find us at iTunes Store by searching for us there, Frame by Frame, separate words, under the podcast category. Look for our logo and then subscribe. You can listen to our podcast directly with SoundCloud, which is at the SoundCloud website, frame by frame 2 You can bookmark the website where you can actually find all the above links at roastedportions.com. Follow us on Twitter at frame by frame 78 all one word. And you could also go to frame by frame 78 with the Facebook group and interact with us there on all our exciting little ponderings during the week when we're actually not podcasting. So please, check us out, subscribe, follow, bookmark, support, listen, and enjoy. This is Frame by Frame. On with the show. You talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Well, who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? I'm funny how. I mean, funny. I'm clown. I'm Peter Vink. We all go a little mad sometimes. Man who does a step down with his family can never be a man. Yeah. Hot. 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 You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! And the clock is running. I think I'm going to start every episode with that, every time now. It's a good catchphrase. The clock is running. I'm going to have, I'm going to have a t-shirt made. I think I think I need to do it with a little bit more angst still. You just woke up. Oh. I hit the record button and you wake up. We're talking to the baby on the chair. Who's just woken up. Yeah. Okay, just pretend we're on TV and uh Andy is Andy and I'm Stephen and we are th- and this is episode 34 of, of Frame by Frame. Been here about what? How long have we been here? 15 minutes. We were talking, everything was fine. The moment you press record he wakes up. He wakes up. It's clockwork. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's fine. It's fine. He'll be. He'll be fine. Uh, if you if you need anything, let us know. Um, you know, I'm not talking to you, the viewers. I'm talking to the baby again, but <laughs> that's okay. But if oh, well, if if you need anything, then please, please uh, email uh, email frame by frame seventy eight at gmail dot com. I think our baby is going to be our link in with any. <laughs> any our baby. <laughs> Let's not let the viewers get the wrong impression of this, Stephen. <laughs> we adopted. We're a gay couple. <laughs> Spread the word. Okay. Um, I'm not even going to qualify that. So, how are you? I'm good. I have a question for you. Uh-oh. Go ahead. What's a poltergeist? What is a poltergeist? Well... It comes from the German noisy yeah, ghost. noisy ghost. We, we, right. we get that. Um, well, from what I know, that it's it's something that you don't see... I'm not too sure if you can feel. Well, if if it's moving you around or pushing you, pulling your hair, then yes, you, it, it's something you feel. Yeah, it moves things. It picks things up. Yes, it can it, be mischievous spirits that will move yeah. your be- your favorite DVD and put them in it somewhere where you can't find it. Do you know what? Yeah, that's been happening a lot. So yeah, I think we do have a problem. Um, but yeah, and, and generally, if you compare it with the description of what a ghost is, a, a ghost can manifest. Public eyes shouldn't be able to. Yeah, I suppose a ghost in many, in many cases, uh, just like a replay of an event. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, like poltergeist is poltergeist. an intentional, yeah, it's being more of a entity. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, which, and yeah, which confuses me. Why is that? Well, because I recently watched the remake of Poltergeist, mm-hmm. and I don't think there's any poltergeist in it. Do you know what? I agree. I agree, and I, I knew you were going to go there. Uh, because I I felt the same with the original as well a little bit. Yeah. Um, to actually have a film called Poltergeist, you expect that. Well, I would expect that they would actually stick to a certain criteria, but because it's the movies and there are studio producers out there that go, I don't care what a poltergeist is. I want to see things on the screen yeah. it's a visual medium I want to see ghosts and the thing about poltergeist if you're going to have a visual putting poltergeist in a visual medium then all you're going to have are objects moving around mm. 
The human mind is powered by electrical currents. Some believe that when those currents refuse to die, they become ghosts. And the most powerful and most violent become poltergeists. Three. But uh, yeah, for 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 my money, I think they went too far on both movies. To yeah. be honest, but uh, the first one I forgive because it's, it's good. It is good, and you do have that forgive, forgiveness feeling about it, even though there there are huge ghosts just blasting out of wardrobe. Uh, uh, was it a wardrobe? Yeah, it comes out of a doorway, doesn't doorway, it? Yeah. That big thing, yeah. Um, and th- there are s- corpses kind of uh, appearing. You through. could argue, however, that that is purely in their imagination, as is all the uh, the, the different happenings that, that happens. That maybe uh, the addition to the definition would be that a poltergeist has the ability to manipulate uh, um, hallucinations. Yes, because in the original, there's that part where he's looking in the mirror and he starts to scratch all his skin off. Yes, and he sort of comes around and he's not, you know, his skin's fine. Which they also had to do in the remake because they purely, you know, they, they obviously don't have any ideas of but their own. But it was own. in a reflection in a tap. Yeah, have you have you tried to look in your tap? I do all the time. <laughs> you said it's your your shaving mirror. That's why your face is such why a you mess. <laughs> that's why you. That's why you miss. You just tap. Uh, so right. yeah. Okay, before we. Okay. What I liked about it. Yeah, let, let's let's go positive. Okay. Um, where the original was all about sort of an economic boom, and everyone could have anything they wanted. You know, it was that Reagan era. Um, where this one, it's more about obviously you're in financial crisis. It's all about the economic downturn that we're suffering at the minute yeah it touches on that it touches on that and um, I kind of like that aspect of it so uh, the first one was more about what everyone had and could have and the American yeah. dream this is more about how it's not the American dream hasn't worked and everyone's struggling they can't find a job which is the background to the to the, to the story incidentally they can still buy a new house with no job yeah that's, that's, that's good how do you do that it's America man so, um, so I like that. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, and because I like, I like it, the scene where he, yeah. he goes to buy what was he going to do? Whatever, he's going to buy something, and his credit cards keep failing. And because he's Sam Rockwell, he's really well. He's really good at sort of that little looking a little bit annoyed. Yeah, looking a little bit annoyed, but really optimistic and having a little jovial chat with the with the um, sh- shop attendants who just doesn't seem to want to be there at all. And he finally finds the credit card that does work, so obviously his ego's been tarnished a little bit. So then yeah. he just goes and buys his family loads of stuff with the credit card that's finally working. Yeah. That's okay. Disposable income. It yeah. means that... Uh, well, he can't, he yeah. can't, the idea is that he can't afford it and shouldn't be doing that, but yes. because his ego's been hit, he just goes, goes and does it. We've all done that. Yeah, and it's a, it's binge spending. Um, mm. It's it's a, to feel good. Yeah. Uh, which, which in the original... They they still had a, a disposable income because you know even well, they were though, minted in the original one yeah. money wasn't an object was it exactly and that's that's perfectly fine they can just pick up and just lose a house and drive off and get it get somewhere else and, yeah and I yeah. like Sam Rockwell yeah we we do like Sam Rockwell I do we really yeah. do he's he's had a long career as well he's is the stuff that he's done um. Green Mile, I, I I still can't believe he was in that. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, I, the, the list is endless. <laughs> Cowboys and Aliens, aliens he was in that. It, uh... I think it'll be easy to just look at the filmography on the list because it's uh, confusing. Um, he was in Moon, which we love. Moon. Moon, Moon is my f- favorite Sam Rockwell movie because it's just him in it, and it suits his demeanor. It suits his. Uh, his... He's in Iron Man Two as well. Iron Man Two yeah. gets slagged off a little bit for not being as good as Iron Man 1 but I, it's still fairly workable decent film that's good yeah no, and no, no, no. Um, he's really good in it he's really funny in it yeah and I, he, he has a, an interesting I, I didn't know he's in Frost Nixon, Nixon yeah. as well um, but he, he, he seems to be in a lot of films here that um, aren't top billing characters he's more of a character actor he's, he's, he's kind of like the Gary Oldman school 
Yeah, of, yeah I'd uh, say so. I'd say, but um, he's just like he's a likable screen presence. Yeah, he's one of those that again we talk about all the time. You feel a little bit safe with him when he's on the screen. You think ah, Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell's there, yeah. But but in Poltergeist, someone paid him a big fat check. <laughs> yeah, and and I'm happy for that because it, it it's giving him the ability. Hopefully, now if you think about the positive in this. For every bad movie that an actor does, they usually follow it up with a passion project because yeah. they've got the money in the bank and they can let themselves go and hopefully. do something. So hopefully there's a passion project in the future for him. Right, but when we talk about horror films, oh. the bare minimum you want from a horror film... Did you hear that? There's a murmuring baby in the background. That was actually quite creepy. <laughs> Is for it to be scary. Yes. This is not scary whatsoever. Now, intentionally, I was going to watch it at night upstairs, but I thought, I'm, I'm easily scared, especially with a baby in the room. Well, you bring in your child up right well, when you can watch horror films. So I thought I'd save it, for the, one. save it for the next day, put Aspen right in the middle of the jumperoo. And let him, actually, no, he sat over yeah. here, behind the chair, with his jumperoo, and I, sh I made sure he didn't see anything, because I thought, well... He's starting to get a very aware now, so... He could have watched it, it would have been fine. And it would have been in, fine. In the Night Garden is more terrifying than the poltergeist is. And I actually mean that, because I find In the Night Garden quite Is menacing. that the B is CBB's thing? Yeah. I can't, I can't stand it. It's freaky, man. Look at that. Look at that. Eagle Piggle's gone to sleep in Upsy Daisy's bed. I'm. I, I kind of feel. Crazy. I, I just don't connect with anything on that show. Oh, crazy. You're not meant to for kids, mate. But in the, there's a bit in it where they're all there's just like creepy three four time music and they're all just swaying from side to side looking into the camera and it's really menacing and kind of like wow. They're all sad. You will sleep. You will sleep. Yeah, sleep, little child. You know what? Yeah, okay, Poltergeist. But, <laughs> it was just not scary. It wasn't scary. No, no, that so the the criteria fails on the on the on straight away. Um like the actors are good all right in it. Mhm. Mm it just it just just let down by it. I think the actors are all right, but I don't think they were given anything to do. Precisely. And like we just say it right in the original it's the iconic, it's movie history. They're here. Don't mess with that. But they did. She had to say, they're coming. Okay. And then, they're Follow here. It. Yes. What the... Why Why do that? Why do that? Exactly. But that's that's exactly why I had an issue with, with Star Trek Into Darkness, for the same reason. Just because a character says something in a film that becomes so iconic. Come Why? Why have it... Re reappearing in, a, in 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 into darkness. Why why bother doing that? And I and I kind of feel as though that that um, it it kind of it make, it's cringeworthy. It's cringeworthy. When that happened in there, and I kind of looked at her face, I, f I felt nothing. Yeah. When she said they're coming, they're here. I just I knew it was coming, mm. and I knew they were here. Yeah. Whereas in the original film. It was still all very shrouded. It's ambiguous at that point. Yeah. Like, Nobody what's knows coming. What, the, what are you on about? Why she exactly? Exactly because like in the original, she's looking at the static in the TV and yeah. it's weird and she's talking to it and you don't quite understand what's going you on. You still don't know what it is. But it's why, the Jaws. It's Jaws. Exactly. You don't know but what, what the hell was? She puts a hand on the TV in the new one and then a hand comes from the other side of the screen and you don't need that. It, it's pushing it too far and and, and then all these hands start coming. You know. Yeah. And which shows they are here. Okay, I get it. Yeah. You don't need right, to tell fine. me now. Okay, great. It's still ambiguous ambiguous in the original it's just there's no ambiguity in the yeah in the, in and the, the original you have where she sits down on the floor and then she just she gets shifted from one side of the room to the other and it's really creepy and yeah, weird and you don't know why you have static the hair stands on end Ooh. I mean come on it was harder to do what they did in the original than what they did in that yeah all they have to do is fit one of those electrical things so when they put the hand on the hand the uh, hand on yeah, the door opening device. Just, just, the hair stands up. Just the... electrocute the children. Yeah, it's great. No, <laughs> I would like to just you know while she's holding that, then just do that to him. Just, <laughs> you know. They shouldn't have done that. 
Why didn't they just do that? Why didn't they just tease each other with it and then give each other electric shocks? Really? Wouldn't it be even better if they actually were running around the house and they they just felt so upset because everything they touched, they were getting shocks? Yeah, exactly. And the original is actually funny. The ju- they're playing with it and it's funny mm-hmm. and... And and that they're they're confused. They're sitting on the floor, and he's kind of he's like, oh, I don't know what's going. On. This is incredible. I don't understand. And they're fascinated by it. Yeah. Straight away, as soon as she disappears into that TV, the husband and wife look at each other and say, "We've got to call the police. I need to tell them the truth." <laughs> what the hell is going on there? Uh, I, I, let me just let me just pull that in there. Let me just say. Uh, it's worth stating for the uh, listeners here that. <laughs> After watching the Poltergeist, um, Stephen wrote War and Peace about it. <laughs> what an essay, wrote an essay. Yeah, everybody seems to know what to do and where everything comes from. Do you know why? Because they watched is... Insidious. No, no. My theory, <laughs> my theory is, is that everybody in this movie knows that that there is an awareness of the Steven Spielberg Poltergeist movie. Right. Okay. So I like that. Yeah. That basically they see the child with the TV they think oh well I've seen this before I've seen this before the family knew that Madison was taken by the entity and seemed pretty accepting of it straight away and I don't get how they just seemed like oh she's gone in the television we need to get somebody who's paranormal into this yeah precisely. straight away straight away instead of actually spending I mean in the original they spent months they got dirty they got they, they weren't eating right they were living in their pajamas because they were literally just trying to wrap their head around what the heck was going on yeah, yeah. they didn't they shut themselves in nobody no contact whatsoever and they were at the end of their um, it was only when they were, she was in the library isn't it when she's looking for books and then she hears someone over talk and then she goes and joins the conversation yes that's when someone gets involved yeah that's it they, they have to go there to through them but then these see, two see, in modern like, horror Insidious came out and everyone liked it because it's quite jumpy and a little bit freaky, yeah? And I liked it, but mm. I saw it's basically a remake of Poltergeist, right? It is. So, <laughs> this Poltergeist is a remake of the first Insidious film, which is a remake of Poltergeist. It's ridiculous. They don't, they, they, people don't know what they're doing anymore. What? <laughs> I could have, right, I could have <laughs> stuck a brush yeah. up my bum, right, and put one end in a jar of paint on a moving elevator and I could have wrote a better film on the wall using that paintbrush oh, <laughs> there's an image uh, yeah that'll stay with you um, <laughs> but I, I I just find it very amazing that uh, these they, these I, I think these are good actors I haven't seen her before the the wife no but she was okay you know what I mean but it, I kind of felt as though that this film damaged her I don't think it, 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 it made me think, well, oh, she didn't seem very good. She just, but I'm, I, then I suddenly, straight away went, it's the writing, it's not her. She's perfectly fine. Mm. She's capable of holding up on, on a film. Her, her filmography stands up saying that, you know, there are, she's done films. Like I, said, I have no problem with she's any of the fine. actors in the film. My the problem fine. is the film. Yeah. It's not, I mean, yeah. yeah. the original, right? The, ca- the clown scene. It's, te- it's really scary in the original yeah, because it was just low key and, and just non. Yeah, it was. But it wasn't. Then, atta- it wasn't Chucky. No, but then they have to find like eight clowns from hell, which because he's such a good parent, he leaves in the room knowing that his son's already scared of them, and then all the clowns then start moving. Exactly, Aspen. He feels my pain. I know. He he, he gets it. And the, but the house, the house, is in a, in a suburb that is already established. Yeah. Okay. It's um okay because the original story um it's a developing site that's on an Indian burial ground. Yeah. So the people who lived in that house before had a fetish with clowns. Didn't report any poltergeist activity. Obviously, their house didn't get wrecked. Yeah. It was only when these moved in. Yeah, because the last people obviously they either failed to realise that their child had gone into the TV or whatever or whatever or anything whoever had lived there before hadn't had realised that anything was going on maybe who lived there before had a modern TV that you couldn't get static on oh that's probably what it is so there. the poltergeist well ghosts let's say what it is ghosts or yeah, what ghosts. Was, demons um, couldn't get to them but they had like an old TV because they didn't have the money which does have static so she gets to watch it who leaves who's why leave the TV on? Uh, Switch the TV off when you go to bed. Mine turns with... off after a while. It Most has modern some, TVs yeah. do. Yeah, it's like you know. Is that what is these yeah, poltergeists yeah. before someone says 
they're here, they can. Oh, but they switched. TV. They switched it on. They there were there, okay. There was another good thing that I thought was quite nice, uh, which was thoughtful, but it still didn't impress me too much. But it impressed me to a little bit um, when the entity first appeared. <laughs> uh, it appears by turning devices on. And it creates a path. That's right. Yeah, that's true. And it goes, it goes around the it house. It goes around the house, and, and and you know where it's moving because the devices are going on, then they're going off. And it was one big long shot, isn't it? It was a big long shot. Oh, so, okay. And I thought yeah, that was quite good. That was good because it, we're in an age where there, there are devices everywhere, but I st- still don't understand why that happens, and why they're the only house. I mean, if if I mean, what, what what's the deal? I mean, is is there a, a a grave? It's it's basically the same thing. The the headstones haven't been removed. It was a cemetery, wasn't it? It cemetery. wasn't an Indian burial ground. It was just a cemetery. Yeah, this this cemetery seems to be just the plot of their house because no, yeah. none of the neighbours have any problems. But then that, that was the same with the neighbors. first one. Yeah, that's the same with the first one, though, wasn't it? Where the neighbours yeah. never reported anything. It was just their house. True, and that's and that's another thing because they went to the neighbours and they they said that you know we've got. You know, we've got a, what was they, they needed something. Have you got any? Yeah, it was like fly repellent or something like yeah, that. Because they're getting bitten alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah and they're slapping you. That was a great scene. Great I love scene. that scene in Poltergeist when they've got the remote control problems. Well, the, Every time yeah. it changes, it changes next. That's door. Spielberg. That's Spielberg, and that's it is. But it's Absolutely. also it's also saying that you know that uh, everybody wants to have their cake and eat it, but the Reagan era says that it's not everybody's going to be with. Somebody yeah. has to be without. So the fight is about you know who who's allowed to have control, and the the fight is no longer about the Senate. It's not about Congress. It's not about the country. It's about the people mm. are fighting amongst themselves to say I, I I want to have more. No, I want to have more. Because basically, that's Pol- the original era. Poltergeist was a political yeah. allegory. Yeah, it was. The cans that burst all over the floor. It doesn't matter. Pick them up and just walk in the house. Let them spray. It doesn't matter. You know that it's it's you know even though the carpet's getting ruined, uh, you know people that seem to have this don't care um, idea about mm. their life as long as they've got the beer and the games on. Yeah, it's uh, and again it's a throwaway lifestyle. The original Poltergeist is full of such amazing moments, like that steady cam shot where she's in the room. She does something. She goes into the kitchen, comes back into the room, and those chairs are stacked. Yeah, in that weird crazy way and what do we have in the remake it's comic books comic books then she turns around and they just fall to the floor CGI comic books that, that yeah, way. And it, they, not very good CGI comic books I didn't even Can't read them I, 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 I wanted to like that but I couldn't <laughs> I, there's, there's a moment when you're actually watching your film and you're thinking I want to say that's clever and I want that to, to, to have been really well thought out but it wasn't but the, the fact that she she turns around Season I think for, the boy, for a split actually. second, yeah. Sorry, the boy, yeah. She turn and then they just fall to the floor. I mean, does nothing with it. it. No, that's paranormal activity. That's turning around, seeing something, and it falls to the floor. That's a paranormal activity thing. Yeah, that's not like what we've got in the original Poltergeist. If it had been, the comic books would have stayed there for a while, and they would have been fascinated by it. Yeah, they would have Mom, come up and Dad. said, "What's going on?" And they would have actually, the parents would have seen it, and they would have been fascinated. Yeah, and they say, "How did you do this?" And they yeah, they'll think it's this. the children, and no, it's not, not the children. Ju- come on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, they'd make that something of it. They'd have made good. a scene of it instead yeah. of it just being a throwaway. Turn around, gone. Yeah. Okay, squirrels. Squirrels. Talk to me about the squirrels. Okay, uh, the incident with the squirrels was the only moment when Sam, Sam Rockwell actually came out of his coma. Did you notice? I, it was actually really funny. He as was well. playful. Yeah. He came down in the corridor, and he was he was suddenly he was suddenly Craig T. Nelson, right? Yeah. Um, who I think Craig T. Nelson was the the best choice in the original film, as was the uh, the other lady whose name I forgot. She was but, called Miss uh, Hanson. Is it by Shop Baba? Yeah. But I I absolutely adore Craig T. Nelson in the film. But they had such a chemistry together. Yeah. These two kind of look like two actors who've just been thrown together in a film. And the squirrel scene was the only moment where he Cause wh- treated his family like a family and look actually acted as I would have Well, acted. when the squirrels, yeah, it's fairly, he freaks yeah. out. And, and it's really it. funny, yeah, yeah it's yeah. relatable. And then when he, yeah, he comes into the corridor, doesn't he, and he's really overplaying it and joking about yeah. it. It's, yeah, that's really good. That's great. That's um, Sam Rockwell <laughs> being allowed to... And you know what I think that is? Sam Rockwell going, can I try this? And the yeah. director saying, all right. And then they've kept it, because it was good. Yeah. As opposed to the direction. Because the, the rest of the film doesn't, mm. you don't see anything like that. 
Exactly. There's nothing. Like, I mean, there, there's a there's the foreplay scene, which in the original uh, film was uh, Craig, T. Craig T. Nelson uh, on the bed uh, with his arms out, ready to do a dive. And he's basically she's giggling on the bed, and They've been it's smoking fun. Pot, haven't they? They've been smoking pot. Yeah, yeah, which is the, also a Reagan era thing. You know, yeah. it's like uh, let's forget about reality. Let's just focus on, lo- you know, lo- losing our minds and just having sex. Absolutely, absolutely. And like but, that but, sort of eighties was like a throwback to the sixties as well. That's like what we were doing when we were at college. This is what everyone was doing. So now, we're... but they didn't. They didn't get down and dirty straight no. away they were, they were honestly just being two people having fun in a room giggling away he was doing his diving thing and the, the, as soon as they start to uh, to have the coitus yeah coitus. Um, the kid comes in okay so the new yeah. he's doing so well over there he's just sitting there happily looking at his feet making discoveries they're good feet they're good feet and uh, yeah so the, the remake where's the foreplay he just says, uh, you know, I like your underwear. Oh, here's my underwear. Um, then he starts to unzip, and that's it. There's an underwear, there's a conversation about underwear, and then it's like, bam. There's no kind of like, there's, they, they don't make a scene. They don't make a scene. They just go straight to, oh, we need, we need to have sex now so that the kid can come in. Yeah. That's it. Let's that's get it out of the way. Have, Let's get it out of the way with, you know. That should have been in the script. <laughs> can we have sex now so the kid can walk in and we can be awkward about it yeah let's <laughs> yeah, that's but that's it but they don't do anything it's just literally they know they have to do it because it works that's what every, every, you know that's every family's problem now you know is as soon as and it always happens as soon as parents want to do the dirty kid cries not talking from experience um so anyway, moving on. Wait, wait till you've been married for a few years longer, mate. It all stops. But yes, but I think it's because Steven Spielberg wanted to have fun with a family when they're making this film. Yeah. They wanted them to be a family. Here they just want to get things over and done with so that you can have this next... The um, ticking boxes. Yeah. Spielberg created the boxes to be ticked. Yeah. And they just transferred them over. He's yeah. an executive producer as well. I mean, he's an executive producer of Jurassic World as well. What which does that also mean? Executive What's, producer. Yeah, does it's, that mean it's, it's a vanity he gets a credit? Money for no, 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 it's vanity credit so that they can promote it, so that they can put his name on the on the banner to yeah. say. Well, that's uh, what I mean. So yeah. he has no creative input into them. No, no, but maybe there was just a checklist. I think that could have been his input for this film. Like Make sure said. these happen. There's a sheet of A4. Yeah. Here you go. Do this. Yeah. You can't go wrong. <laughs> it's, it's fail safe, free. It's good. Um, yeah, Rockwell acts like he's he's. Uh, he doesn't act like a father or a husband. It's more like he's actually kidnapped this family and had them in, you know, in, in, in a kind of a Stockholm syndrome kind of a thing where they just trust him. That might, that might be what happened. I just, I, yeah, I just don't connect as, as a family. I just don't think they work. No. Uh, the, the eldest, the eldest daughter, she, um, she's babysitting because the two have gone out for a night out. Yeah. Which you know. With hideous people. Well cast, um, and um, <laughs> yeah, and then stuff happens. Yeah, so she, she uh, starts she, to pick she, it up on her phone. Yeah, that's another thing. Tell me about this, Andy. She's looking for a reception, isn't she? She loses a reception or something, like, and then yeah. she's walking around trying to find it. And she goes into a room. She hears voices on. Yeah, the, the door shuts behind her, and then she gets her foot cut in some caught in some mud. Her hand comes out of the ground, doesn't it, and pulls yeah. her foot into some mud, and she's stuck there for a little bit. Poltergeist mud. Poltergeist mud. Poltergeist hand. Meanwhile, the boy's being terrorized by a tree. For some reason, nowhere near as good as the Tick. original poltergeist. Tick. But well, the beauty of the original poltergeist is the tree starts to eat him. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really scary and. It's a hallucination. It, it is bound well, in they a... Pull, they pull them out of the tree, though, don't they? Yeah. But with this, but, the tree just puts them on the floor. That's it. Good stuff. Really. Yeah, very like, good. C- CGI guys are a little bit bored yeah. by that time. They just I, wanted to go and work like, on the next four movies. Yeah, let's make the tree eat him. Nah, let's just, just the tree put him down. The girl's been taken now. So even in the in the original, the idea of, of, it, of things being hallucination are questionable because they do... It's ambiguous. Up, it's ambiguous. But, the beauty uh, of things like that is you don't answer it you make up your own mind. That's good. that's good filmmaking. Not saying our audience is a bit dumb. Let's just let's just paint it all out for him. Let's not worry about that. So meanwhile, the little girl, a toy, goes into a void in a closet, which she then walks into, 
And then she turns around, noticing that the doorway to a closet is quite far away. It closes. Then she's in the TV. So, if I go into a closet in my house, I'll end up in a TV. Okay. Uh, really? That's that's how it, it happens. It? Or, if you go behind a bookshelf, you're in a different dimension, thanks to Interstellar. Yes. Oh, dear. I'm going to have to uh, just take a brief time out. Poltergeist, which is a remake of the original from 1982. Did you see the original when it first yes. came out? Yeah, I thought it was. I remember being pretty impressed by it. So while this doesn't desecrate the grave of the original, it doesn't really offer much reason to, to raise it from the dead. It's not terrible, and certainly in terms of the remakes that we've seen recently, it doesn't do any severe harm to the. But it just adds nothing, and subtracts quite a lot. And we're back, and uh, we do have background noise now. Of um, Peppa Pig. Yep. And Jumperoo by Fisher Price. It's a classic. Other Jumperoos are available, of course. Yeah, if you've anyone to uh, uh, sponsor us. <laughs> Fisher Price, that would be kind of a cool sponsor. It would, yeah. That would just have a little, little blinky. I don't think we're quite demographic for them, but never mind. Some of the, yeah. co- some of the content we've put um, out. You know. That's why we're explicit. We can't have Fisher Price advertising on an explicit uh, podcast. No, no, no. But anyway, let's get back to ripping Poltergeist, the new one. <laughs> 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 but see, the thing is, is like we, we always do trying to remain positive. So even if yeah. we didn't enjoy the film, we try and find the positives in it. It's really difficult. With this one, yeah. I mean, we, we've had we've had difficulty in the past. I mean, you didn't like the room. And I hated I, the room. And I, I kind of found it kind of quirky and, and and fun because it's a group we, we discovered that whole group dynamic from that yeah but even with poltergeist if you had like a, a house full of people they will all just sit there and be bored exactly because we've not talked about it for a while but we've come up with our own certification of, ro- of films that should be seen with more than one person otherwise it's dangerous like if, the room if it's a bad room pandemic. if it's a bad room if it's a bad film then likely it would work with a, with a crowd because, because everyone's having a drink, having a laugh, and, and talk about how bad it is, and, and then it's funny. Yeah, I get that. You can. I don't think you could do this because when we, I was watching this, I was watching it with my wife, and she was hating it from the start. And I was telling her, "Will you just be quiet? Give it a chance," because I wanted to like it. Yes. And I just couldn't like and it. Just, uh, by halfway, I just given up. Yeah, I yeah, just said, "You're right." You know, this is a bad movie. I think by the time the forgetful paranormal investigators had come into it, I'd had enough then. Yeah, and, and the fact that, well, let's let's talk about the original first. Let's talk up the uh, the part of Tenjin. Mm. Uh, she she was a breath of fresh air. She was for a. Fi- I mean, the film was kind of like, the film was kind of going in a difficult uh, place because they had paranormal investigators who didn't know what to do. They had the tech. But they were still a little bit shaky. They hadn't seen anything like this before. Yeah. And there was actually some while they were there in the opening scenes of that, you know, when they were first visited the house, there was actual poltergeist activity. Happening. But what I really liked about that bit is where they're all sat around the table and then something moves, and the the family are so used to it at that point yeah. that they don't phase them, and they're like, "Oh my god!" And they're like, "Yeah," because aren't they talking about they saw something move, and it took like over the course of six hours something yeah. moved from one place and we witnessed it and all right yeah very good Tick. And, yeah and then um i'm talking about the original yeah the, yeah, the original. yeah yeah and then they have that the light just suddenly glow goes really strong yeah and they're like they're all looking at it right wait in about four seconds there'll be a bang one two three four bang bang yeah. and, and they're so used to it and they've lived with it and yeah. that's the thing you do, you get with the original they've that's lived such with a this. great dynamic there where the paranormal investigators go in all cocky and they're the ones that like terrified where the family are just so used to it but they're point. real they're, yeah. they're real because their reaction is real and they they their response is we need to get somebody else in who is who is really weird yeah. and uh, you're gonna you're gonna find her adorable you're gonna want to adopt her uh, here's Tangine do you mind hanging back you're jamming the frequencies what side of the rainbow are we working tonight, Dr. Lynch? Is this your Knott's Berry Farm solution? I know what you're thinking, but you must take my word for it. She's cleaned many houses. Her gifts have been documented. Look, we haven't heard Carol Ann since last night. Why is this door locked, Mr. Freeling? Answer her, Stephen. I am. I am addressing the living. I'm sorry. 
sorry. That's the room my son and daughter used to occupy. We believe it's the heart of the house. This house has many hearts. What is the matter? What's the matter? <laughs> I was trying to answer her with my mind, and she couldn't hear me. No, I thought you said this tin gene appearance was an extraordinary uh, clairvoyant. I just don't like trick answers. What a find. Yeah, and she, she's she's so confident. And she makes you feel you, confident. Yeah, and you feel all right, we're in safe hands here. She makes the family cry, there's emotion, yeah. there's sensitivity, and there's there's uh, there's light at the end of a tunnel for yeah, this yeah. family. And you really are invested. Yeah. As an audience you are like, Oh that I, I feel good now. That now that she's here I feel a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, the, the, Let's go to the remake. Yeah. How are these two guys? Well, how is the, how is how is the paranormal investigators? How are they portrayed? I, before I, the... I don't remember. <laughs> okay. That's <laughs> they, okay. Were, they were fluff. Now, because of the uh, the trend in in ghost hunter shows, um, our his name apparently is Carrigan Burke. You see, he doesn't even have a name that is remotely as memorable as Tangine. Um, Carrigan. Carrigan. He's first seen, he's first introduced because the eldest in this family, coincidentally, is watching a TV show that has him in it. Yeah, that's true. And it's it's supposed to be comical. It's the supposed yeah, to be Yeah, the TV show isn't real. Isn't, you know, doesn't look re the TV show doesn't look real, does it? It just looks like a, a joke. Now yeah. tell me. His entrance, then, was so, like, meh. Meh. Yeah. Doesn't... The eldest try to get his autograph, and then she they're wants, like, "I look yeah. so cool at school with this." Forgetting yeah. that takes a photograph of it. Yeah, that's it. Forgetting the fact that a his sister is gone. Yeah. Oh no, no, that that was the house has been cleaned. That was at that the was end. at the very end, yeah. right? Sorry, but uh, but luckily, you know, she's still cool with with you know him. Yeah, and the the things that he's done and his celebrity, even though. They're, they're, you expect when you actually see a TV personality at the beginning of a film, you expect him to be completely different and, and ag arrogant and diff difficult. He was nothing. No. Again, uh, Jared Harris is an amazing actor. He comes in and he has got nothing to do but just be there and be there. Yeah. And be a presence in the movie. Tangine blows your mind. She's literally just this wee woman that she's untouchable. She's got this enigma. Mm. She glows. You can't. You don't mess with that. And yet, yeah, it, it's just a, such a throwaway, pointless uh, character that you can hardly <laughs> remember what he actually does. What the, what the, the fact that he actually comes prepared as well with a rope. I remember seeing the original movie. Again, back to that. You're right, yeah. It is as if like, all the characters watch Poltergeist and just say, oh, we'll just do it's what, the same what thing. was in that Spielberg film. So, and, and straight away he goes, well, quite obviously, you know, this this uh, house has been built on a on a, on a grave, oh, graveyard, cemetery, yeah. cemetery. They removed the stones, but they didn't remove the bodies. I'm like, I didn't see you go to the library. I didn't see you going through newspaper reels. And I didn't see you actually look at a book or anything to say, hmm, I've done my research. Maybe he Googled it on his phone. That was, yeah. He must, he must have done that. Yeah, Google. Poltergeist activity. Yeah. Maybe. House. Yeah, house. <laughs> so, so there's nothing from him that has... Instantly he comes in, I know exactly what I'm doing. I've seen Poltergeist. This is how we're going to do it. Just, to, just so happens I've got a big length of rope in a bag waiting ready since 1982. Yeah. Since I was 16 years old. And first I saw watched Poltergeist, that film, yeah. I thought, well, I'm, I'm into this. That's what, obviously what inspired him to do what he does. And so, yeah, it's really, really stupid. There's yeah. no, There's no learning. He doesn't go in and learn from the family. He doesn't learn who they are. He shows his leg and grosses them out. Yeah. That's is that the best they can do? Is that the scene that they have to make him an enigma? And it turns out that he just tripped or something. He, a boom operator cut his leg open with a boom mic. With a boom. Well, they are sharp. 
Yeah, not sure, that it, fluffy muff really does have some la- blades sticking out. You never, w- never get bitten by a fluffy muff. <laughs> I live my life by that. Yeah. So, it, it, but it, they introduce it with with the TV show. She's watching the TV show. Yeah. And his famous line in this show is, "The house is now clean," which is Tangine's line. The house is clear. Clean. She says oh, clear, doesn't clean. she? I'm sure it's clear. Clean. Yeah. Okay, so maybe there's a. Yeah, I, I can't remember. Slight, slight, slight difference. I but, think. But when she says it, oh my god. It's it's kind of like a a relief. You can, there's a feeling. Of, yeah, you 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 feel that the house is clear. Yeah. Until it disappears. So, <laughs> get sucked into so that void of the dimension thing. Pulse guys do that as well. They they eat houses. They eat houses. Oh my god! Because nothing like that happens in the end of this one, does it? Yes, it does. It, does it, it? it bursts up into a beam of light, and there's kind of like a shooting of light. A sh- a sh- a, oh right! It's kind of like the first Iron Man. You see how completely sort of uh, Iron Man comes I'm... out when all these little birds come flying through the portal. No, 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 no. It's just yeah, but that's it. It does that, and then. Um, there's this big, uh, huge pan as the car drives off erratically down the road, and then about about nine blocks away, that you can see little people coming out of their house to see what the disturbance is. Right. Nobody around the house. Not at all. Nothing. There's nobody living there. Absolutely nobody living there. And it follows. People are running from house to house. They can see each other's house. They know what's going on. Yeah. If I if if you're living across from that house over there and they're having the poltergeist activity that these people are having, I think I'd be concerned and I'd be, you know, I, they'd be sleeping over in this house because that house is haunted. Yeah. Or absolutely. And there's just there, there's just nothing make there's nothing grounded in any sense of family reality, um, or paranormal investigator sense of anything. Right. Let, let, let's lay the cards on the table then. So. It makes no sense. It, it doesn't. It makes no sense. The characters aren't Shallow. really. They, they, not, they don't work as a family. They're not a family. They don't work. To, it's not scary. No. So it's not really a horror film because it doesn't tick any box of being scary at any point. It ticks Steven Spielberg's boxes of being a cliche. Yeah. A ripoff. So um, pretty much every level, the film doesn't work. It, it really is a bad film, and the only the only good thing is is that there are hardworking people. Who put a lot of love into this film to try to do their best to do what they were asked to do, and it's just God bless those people because they're going to work on Sam Rockwell's next passion project. Hopefully, because but it's just paid another well. paycheck. Yeah, it's just another remake that it's as bad as the Fog remake. There's no need for this movie to exist. No, not at all. And I, I feel. I mean, there are people in this movie who I don't even recognise. I mean, who's she? Who's she? Well, who's you know, there's nothing wrong with up and being oh, yeah, in the yeah, film, yeah. but the, there's nothing wrong with up and coming actors using this as a stepping stone to get somewhere yeah, else. But... Which is which is kind of the only reason that this film exists. It's school fees for them. Yeah. Um, and a nice fat paycheck for Sam Rockwell. So we can now go and do something more indie. And there's a hilarious ending to this film where they go to another house and the realtor tells them that there's a, a, a huge tree and there's a, you know, that she, she starts to paint it out as being a house that could potentially be haunted and mm. she turns around and they've driven off. Yeah. They don't gone. want anything to it. They just drive off and that's the end. Which is pales in comparison to Poltergeist where the ending is they all end up in that hotel room and then the door shuts the door opens again they push the TV out and then shut the door Magic. beautiful end that's it and I, and I think that uh, throughout its faults the original you kind of ignore all of that because it works so beautifully yeah. nobody had done that kind of a film before but it was do you remember the scene perfect. in the original one where it's almost beautiful when they film in all those lights and those people coming down the stairs yes. and it's stunning it is and it's and you can feel it the yeah. atmosphere is electric yeah absolutely yeah that's, you that's get it you get it you get it yeah it's organic and it's beautiful and there's none of that in this it's no. just pointless and it's upset me the score uh, tell me about the score for Poltergeist <laughs> Wow. Wow, someone did a score for it. 
That's it. Okay, so moving on. Who composed it? Uh, somebody who probably marks. Oh, it, it, he has he, a name. He didn't do Gladiator. He probably worked on it as a um, soundtracks composers. Okay, the TV series Hand of God. Prometheus. Prometheus. Okay. The Grey. Robin Hood. Body of Lies, Fallen Angels, American Gangster, and The Good Year. He likes, he likes, and Robin Hood. He he likes working with Russell Crowe as a as an inspiration for his scores. Right. So we we all love that. But the thing is about this. I mean, I think the score is probably really good. Probably, if I can remember it. Right. Okay. How about this? I think a score is good when you don't remember it when it's bad you start to think god this music's awful yes and then you pay attention to it but then it's elevated if you if you feel as though when you're watching the movie that you are lost in the movie but then afterwards you still have that melody that theme that music with you well, that's when it elevates I th- yeah I think beyond. a theme you, a theme song the theme should be strong and good mm. and like it is for like Raiders and Stuff look James at John. Harnedy. Look at John Carpenter as well. I mean, all those films. I mean, his music is memorable. Yeah. Uh, even though it works perfectly within the subtext mm. as a layer. But I, I think, it, like, it, like I said, I think it's the same with special effects. When special effects are good, you don't notice them. No, no. But when they're bad, you're like, oh my god, it's awful. You don't notice them, but you and you appreciate them. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, it's 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 incredible. So, I'd like to listen to his score as an isolated thing and I'd like to think that that is probably the only good thing about this movie yeah and the um, the little I'd like to think so and, and I like that I kind of like the idea the, they haven't got any money they're struggling the, 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 like the B story scene. the, the theme, theme the B yeah, story yeah. I, I like that scene where yeah. you know the obnoxious um, retail attendant and he was trying to different credit cards he looks all embarrassed with it. The, that part was good and the squirrel bit Squirrel. Yeah. So the two bits I like in this film is when his credit cards wouldn't work and when the squirrel came out. <laughs> Which is exactly what you want from your poltergeist movie. Exactly. <laughs> Rodents and bad finances. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can uh, wrap that. Uh, we can we can put poltergeist to bed now. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. Uh, in the same room that it that it, that it had. You can go with sleep with the fog remake. Go, go live with the clowns. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, is a reboot of the 1982 classic that starred Craig T. Nelson and Joe Beth Williams. Yes, yes. What, um, amazing film. What can people expect from the new version? Well, it's it, we're, the couple, the, the family suffering from the recession, so they're downgrading to a, a different kind of house, and technology's got a bigger role, obviously. It's in, in the 3D. Movie. So it's, it's in 3D. Art, like the technology in the film is different. The cameras that we're using now are different, so we kind of go into the other side a little bit more. The, the family. It's not the. The sunny 1982, everyone's got money in their pocket. Yeah. It's like right now yeah. our credit cards are all maxed out. We're giving our kids too many iPads and iPhones. And we don't know how to connect to them or parent them yeah. anymore. And so this family's kind of in crisis. And the paranormals yeah. are different. There's a lot of differences, yeah. Yes, but people remember the original Poltergeist is so oh, yeah. so, oh, yeah. so scary. It's the scariest movies to you. I think, um, you know, Alien uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, oh, yeah. there's a picture. Yeah. That, that I couldn't sleep because you know you think yeah. you turn into a pod person. Yeah. And it was in San Francisco. Yeah, it was. It shot in San Francisco, which was where I live. So. Well, it's so much fun to work with Sam Rockwell. Yeah. I have well, to say. Vice versa. Yeah. Uh, it's really fun. You know, what's really fun to do that horror movie screen. Like I can check that off. Like that blood curtain. Yes. Like you just. Everyone wants to know if they have one of those. You know, right? When well, yeah. you're in the shower and you're like, what would I do if somebody? You know. <laughs> and I think I have one. Maybe. You tell me. Yeah, you, you got a good movie. one. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's fine. Do they, have, they get a clip. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, save your voice. Save your voice. <laughs> Since it's coming out, are either of you going to plan to sneak into a movie theater this weekend to see it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Night, I think. Right yeah. Now. I haven't seen it, so I'm, I want to see it with. You the three, seen it. I haven't seen it. I want to see it with the glasses yeah. and, the, and, you know, an there, right? and an audience. And an audience. Civilians. Oh, Oxy Daisy. <laughs> Well, okay. before we finish up, we want to just say, Mark, the passing of uh, James Harner. Yeah. This this who's is a, actually... He was a prolific composer, and um, 
died in a helicopter crash, was it? He was flying it, in a helicopter, was it a plane? I think it was a plane. Yeah. But um, it really took me by surprise, and I seriously did feel... He was only in his 60s, wasn't he? Heartfelt. I, I, in the same way that Leonard Nimoy is passing. I mean, I, I, the thing is about James Horner is that he's not a, a person you know as a figure. You don't really see him in interviews, but you know him... He talks to you with his music, mm. and for the, for that to be gone, that to be lost is quite heartfelt. Yeah. Um, one story that I can say that as, as a kid I grew up and um, <laughs> you did, didn't you? <laughs> I, did I grew too. Up, I grew up with his music. Yeah. Um, but accidentally, my dad had recorded music on a cassette, and I took the cassette and recorded something on the other side. Not knowing what was on the other side, I kind of turned it over and I listened to this music. It was beautiful, it was sweeping, and it was different. I hadn't heard it before in my, in my life. And it's nothing that you'd expect. It wasn't Cocoon or anything like that. It wasn't Star Trek 2. It was the end credits of a, a, a little film called Project X. Oh, I know that film. The film with Matthew Broderick, Helen Hunt. Yeah, the, they're the, liberating the, um, um, apes, apes from yeah. a, an experiment uh, from which they die. Uh, test, uh, test, oh, mate. doing test stimulation. The scene where Simula simulation, where it saves everybody yeah. and stays in that room, it stayed with me to this day. I yeah. bawled my eyes out the first time. I saw it's that. that kind of a movie, and I learned a little bit of sign language. I know how to say apple, and uh, from from watching Virgil. The monkey. Virgil. See, oh, see, that, see, that, I'm getting all upset now. See, that's the thing. Virgil. That's the thing about about uh, the movie. It's memorable. Yeah. Guys, no. So, but with James Horner's score, I remember listening to it in my bed, in, in bed, just over and over again with headphones. I didn't know what it was, didn't know where it came from. I just knew that it was that that. Whenever I heard anything else of his, it got me. Yeah. It got me there because, but I didn't realize it was him that had done it. But I knew that every time I listened to a James Horner, I became a fan of James Horner without knowing it I, bu I bought this video Project X because I had a bit of a, a you had the horn for James Horner I had a crush for Helen Hunt actually oh, right, okay. um, all right. I had a thing about Helen Hunt and I was collecting all her, of her, her movies at the time I think it was just before Twister when she was mad about you and uh, I got the video and I played it and I recognised certain themes in the movie and I thought this, this, this is familiar I know this I know this music I know this music and the end credits came in and I bawled I, I teared up because I thought I found it my fascination with Helen Hunt has brought me to this music and yeah. it's kind of like the, it, 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 for some reason it kind of made me think that it made me believe in fate it made me believe that, that everything you you do has a knock on effect and has led to something yeah. and it, all this came from just this music I know with James Horner once he'd done the soundtrack he never went back and listened to it really? No, I had no idea about never it never listened to it so that's why you can tell it's a James Horner soundtrack because certain themes pop up because he not he's not listened to it after he's done it he's done finished that project on to the next one and he does he does so re reiterate he, well, certain he things he did Predator yeah. didn't he yeah uh, he did yes yeah and certain themes I always got because the theme from Predator is so distinct that I could hear I could, I always knew it was a James Horner soundtrack because certain themes sounded like that and that's how I always got it and he he was a collaborator as well. <laughs> That's it, yeah. Predator. It is, and, and you know it's him. And, it, and you can tell that throughout his career, through the 80s, you knew what was moving him. Uh, be it animal noises, be it uh, um, the sweeping score of Star Trek II was very similar to Project X, to the yeah. Rocketeer. <laughs> hey, I'm buddy. A, I'm a little party over there, Aspen. Loving it, isn't it? And you know, with Die Hard, there is there are certain themes in there as well that uh, that he, he wrote certain themes yeah. that appear in other soundtracks that other other um, composers worked on, and it's he that did, good. So he's done. Batteries not included. Willow, Red Heat, Vibes. You keep reading through. I'm going to pick the baby up. The Land Before Time, Cocoon, Cocoon: The Return, Andy Colby's Incredible Adventure, Field of Dreams, Honey I Shrunk the Kids, Tummy Trouble, In Country. Dad, Glory, I Love You to Death, Tales from the Crypt, Another 48 Hours, Extreme Close-Up, 
Once around, my heroes have always been cowboys, class action, rocketeer, and American tale, Five Will Goes West, Norman and the Killer, Fish Police, Thunderheart, Patriot Game. Keep unlawful, going, keep going, keep unlawful going. Unlawful Entry, Sneakers, Swing Kids, A Far Off Place, Jack the Bear, Once Upon a Forest, House of Cards, Searching for Bobby Fisher, The Man Without a Face, Bofa, We Are Back, A Dinosaur Story, The Pelican Brief, Clear and Present Danger, the Page Master, Legends of the Fall, Braveheart, Casper, Apollo 13, Jade, Jumani, Balto, The Spitfire Grill, Courage and the Fire, to Jillian on her 37th birthday, Ransom, he did Ransom, oh, the, the Devil's Own, oh he did Titanic, <laughs> uh, Deep Impact, The Mask of Zorro, Mighty Joe, Bicentennial Man, Bringing Down the House, Freedom Song, The Perfect Storm, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, or Masking Zaru, The Morph of to Morphing Something, A Beautiful Mind, Iris, Wind Talkers, The Fourth Feather, The Making of Sneakers, The Missing, I'm just going to keep reading, alright. Keep reading. House of Sand and Fog, We're like Bobby West. Jones, Troy, Field of Dreams, A Diamond in the Husk, <laughs> The Forgotten, Star Trek New Voyages, um, East Meets West, A Stuntman for All Seasons, the Chum Scrubber, Flight Plan, The Legend of Zorro, The New World, All the King's Men, Apocalypto, The Life Before Her Eyes, The Spiderwick Chronicles, The Boy in Striped Pajamas, Avatar, The Karate Kid, <laughs> Black Gold, The Greater Glory, An Amazing Spider-Man, um, Reflections on Titanic, you can First in Flight, some. yeah I'm skipping some now, Wolf Totem, Living in the Age of Airplanes, Southpaw, Southpaw's his last one, his last film. And I think it'll be worth listening to that one yeah. to, to kind of uh, get an idea of what what he was. I also really want to watch South Park as well. South yeah. Park. Okay, so I in, in whilst reading that list, I mean, what a list! Prolific. I mean, there's that. Um, was that longer than the Disney? Nothing's what? longer than what Disney on, mate. Okay. <laughs> okay, but uh, it's about put, time. Are you going to put a song behind that? It's about time we had. I am going to put a bit of James Horner's score behind that. Okay, if, awesome. If uh, his people will let me. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's a personal thing, a personal connection with the guy. You've got more of a personal connection than I have. Yeah. Because um, I didn't associate the music uh, as much as the actual characters. You know, yeah. the music would have helped, obviously. It's the and I still stand by when a score is brilliant. You don't notice it. You don't notice it, but also, yeah. But a theme song, you a good theme song, you remember. I mean, Ben McCreary did an essay on the Rocketeer soundtrack um, when he was in. It was actually a part of his dissertation. Right. Um, he's put Ben McCreary wrote a beautiful piece about him. Um, you know, saying that you know he was a hero of his growing up. And for, for musicians, you know, you do kind of. I mean. You have a stronger connection with with guitarists, I imagine, more so than. I do, but it's interesting because knowing how how bitchy musicians are. If there's a composer that people want to work with and will work with time and time again, then that's a special guy. Yeah. Most of musicians, people work with them once and think I'm never working with that person again. What a like Shinedo Collar was with. Like Shinedo Jewish. Connor was with Van uh, Van Morrison. Yeah. Did you ever see that performance? I didn't see it, but I can imagine Van being a tricky person to work well, with. And I can imagine her being a tricky person. Yeah, to I think they hated each other because their performance on Dave Letterman was absolutely appalling, and you can tell they were. He basically was jumping all over the mic, going, "You, you, 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 you." That's what. You, 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 you. Still doing what she did and being quite coy with it and right. you know, looking at, there was no uh, that's the first first time I've actually seen a duet with, with two people <laughs> I love that first time i see seen a duet with two, two people, people who just left it there <laughs> yeah. who, who who couldn't professionally work together yeah. no matter what you should watch some of the old um, um, Fleetwood Mac Rumours era stuff because while they were doing rumours, everyone was sleeping each other in the band and cheating on each other with someone else and all that, and they were writing about it. Uh, so there's this great like Abba did. So they, they, yeah, they so probably saw, yeah. There was a great video where they're singing um, the chain, and there's a lyrics in the chain. It's if you don't love me now, you'll never love me again. Blah blah blah. 
and Lindsay Buckingham and Stevie Nicks are literally shouting the words at each other because they're singing in harmony with each other and he's looking at and he's like if you don't love them and they're shouting at each other huh? it's amazing to watch It, music, music is powerful. Music is emotional, and I think that uh, yeah, absolutely. Sorry, you're right. Just a friend from a passage pops up on Facebook. Ah, do you just love it? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I've not, I've not seen him for about three years. Uh, do you ever get that kind of feeling on, uh, when when someone adds you? You think, okay, I, I I we had a history. You know, that was a long time ago. Yeah. What do you want? <laughs> what do you need now? Or it was like, I need to tell you that um, you have a son. <laughs> like, what? Oh, no, 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 no. L- luckily, uh, Sorry, Aspen, it was a bit loud, that one, it, dude. What do you mean? <laughs> but, yeah, so, okay, Poltergeist, bad. James Horner, brilliant. Yeah, memorable, and uh, we'll miss... Um, yeah. And, and But do you know what? We're not short on scores to listen to. We're not, and now we um, can play The Great Gig in the Sky. Yeah, that's it. Well, this has been um, Frame by Frame. Yeah, we're, and we're on um, iTunes now. That's good. It, yeah. it took us like we a should, year. We should have opened with that. We should have, because we were really excited about that. But uh, yeah, we're on iTunes. Yeah. And uh, so if you go to the iTunes store and search for us there, we're right there, frame by frame. Not all one word, of course, just frame by frame. No, and we sort of come up in the first three or four I think yeah if you're under the uh, the podcast category yeah uh, don't, don't look for, don't look for us under gardening or saying that though if they're listening to this they've already found us so it's <laughs> yeah hopefully <laughs> right Aspen's going to start getting a bit grumpy now so yeah, we'll, uh... so right one second um, I just want to say that please if you could follow us if you could actually join us on Facebook and if you do want to join us on Facebook would you like to like things and comment on things because that's what Facebook's for. Yeah, for being unbiased. Yeah, and just being... Uh, we want you to fluff us up, okay? Yeah. Like, a, like a nipple fluffer. Yeah, okay? I want my nipples to be fluffed. By Facebook. you. Thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye. That's, that's all we ask. <laughs> it's good to be back playing L.A. It's been a while. It's been about two years since we've been on the road. And a lot of people were wondering what happened to us. I mean, there are a lot of things that happened. Have we broken up, whatever. But we're here to show you that we just refuse to go away, so.